Hello everyone, I'm Elias Sraf and I'm working as a solution architect at Valo Internet. In this video, I will show you how you can use the SharePoint Framework PMP controls in your project. The SharePoint Framework PMP controls exist of two types. First of all, we have the property pane controls, which can only be leveraged in the property pane of your web part. So that's during the configuration part of your web part. On the other hand, we have the controls uh, that can be used inside the body of your web part, and these are React based. They can also be leveraged inside an application customizer, for instance. It doesn't need to necessarily be a web part. In order to use these controls, we first have to install them to our project. And for that, you can just use the commands which you will find on the home page of our controls project. Once you go to your project and you open your command prompt in your project, just run the command in order to install. Once you have installed these libraries into your project, it's time to leverage them. First of all, what I want to do is spin up my local host server and then I'm going to remove this paragraph and will replace it with an actual placeholder. The placeholder control can be found in the controls react project and there you will find a documentation page which is going to show the web part configuration placeholder that tells the end user that the web part still needs to be configured there are two steps that need to be done first of all we need to import the placeholder inside our project and the second one would be to actually use the control so that's what we do over here. Now in here, we still see that we have an issue. And for that, I'm going to use a property which I specified on my components, which is a method call over to my actual web part. And you can see this over here in my property pane. I specified that I also need to have uh, this method being passed from my actual web part. So on my web part, which we can find over here. I have my tiles, which is actually the component that I'm going to show. I still need to pass in some information over here. And this would be the F property pane open method that I need to specify. And where is this data coming from? This data comes from my context of my web parts. There we will find the property pane. Uh, and on the property pane, you have an open method. Once you have done this, it's going to or it should allow us to open the property pane so this is my workbench where my web part was already loaded on if i go to refresh my page it should show me the web part with now with the placeholder and if i click on configure it opens my property pane so now that we have the web parts with the placeholder that actually opens the property pane it's time to add some more logic to the property pane for that, we can leverage the property pane controls. And in here, in this documentation, you will find all the property pane controls that we have. Uh, the one that we are going to use is the collection data control, which allows you to create a set of data that you want to leverage within your web part. And it's going to be stored as a JSON representation. On the other hand, we are also going to use a number field, which only allows us to add numbers instead of text. Uh, same thing needs to be done. So first of all, you need to import the fields over to your uh, project. Um, as it's a property, you need to specify the property to be used as a property inside your control. And then you uh, add the control itself over to the groups field section of your web part. That's what you can find over here. So in here, in the web part file, we have a groups fields, and in here, normally you specify all the controls that you want to use. So first of all, we need to import what we want to use. So we are going to use the property field number and the collection data control in there. So once you have that in place, uh, it's time to include the group field. So we are going to override this with Two controls the property field number and also the field collection data control 
As mentioned, the field collection data control allows you to fully customize the experience and it's allowing you uh, to tell the control which fields that you need, like for instance, title, description, the URL that you want to show the icon and the target. As the web part is going to show tiles, this is the information we need in order to show all the tiles correctly. Once saved, and when the web part is reloaded, we can go to the SharePoint page, refresh the page to see if our controls are being there. So that's what's going on right now. So all the fields are being set up correctly. Another thing what we need to do is we have these properties that we are now storing uh, with collection data and the number. We have to pass them over to our components in order to render them. As my web art and my component are both leveraging the same kind of properties, I can just thread these like this over so that I don't have to write each and every single property in order to be used. Once this is done, we go back to our component, we refresh it. Now we can click on configure and we can just type in workbench, for instance, and then sp workbench. We specify a URL, which is this URL, and then we need to give an icon. And once we store uh, save this, uh, we can actually see the tile that is being rendered in our component. The last component that we can add to the project would be a title uh, that we can use. In our controls uh, project, we have a web part title, which is very similar to the first party title control that they are using in the out-of-the-box SharePoint uh, web parts. So we can leverage the same thing. And in here, you will find the same kind of documentation. So all the things that you need to do, like you have to pass in a method in order to store the property. And that's what we are going to do. So first of all, uh, let's put everything in place for passing that. So in here, I need to specify a new method to pass to my component in order to update my title, uh, which is going to retrieve a value. And it's going to say this dot properties dot title, and it's going to store the new value in here like this. What do I need more? I need to have the display mode. The display mode is telling uh, my component if it's going to be rendered, inside the view mode of the page or inside the uh, edit mode of the page. So this is all what we need for the web part. Then we can go to the tiles and on the tiles section, what we want to add is first of all, we need to import the web part title. Once we have the web part title imported, uh, then the next thing would be, or the last step would be to add the control over to our project. And that's what we do over here. So, in here, we leverage the display mode that we passed over from the properties. We're using the title and we're using the app update property, which we specified over here in order to update our title. So once the web part again is reloaded, we can go back to our SharePoint page. We can refresh it. And now we should see a web part title. This is our SPFX PMP demo. And if we are going to the preview mode, our title should still be in place and also our tile. So thank you all for watching this video around the property pane controls and the uh, React uh, controls from PMP. Hope you learned something new and keep on developing.